So, after that, I better tell you why we're here. So today, I've traveled from London across to Kent to Rob Whitfield's gym, uh, LRF. And uh, we're gonna spend the afternoon discussing our careers. He's been in the industry a long time. Um, he's built a very successful gym, very successful online coaching business, prep coaching. And uh, we're gonna discuss similarities in our careers, life lessons, things we've done right or could have done differently as we've gone through our career. And also I'm here in a mentoring capacity to support Rob with the growth and development um, and structuring of his business 2020 moving forward. So uh, I'm gonna continue. I'll see you guys in a bit. Over the last six, seven months, Rob and I have been working together um, in various different uh, aspects of his business. Rob's gym is a lot bigger than M10, but we both run gyms. We both have staff, we both are responsible for marketing. So I thought it was a great idea to sit down with Rob and just talk about our experiences with owning gyms, managing people, being responsible for finances, um, and also scaling and developing your business model uh, further. So Rob, thanks for hosting me here. My pleasure. Love the gym. Awesome, thank you. As you saw in the video, I uh, took myself through legs, which is great to be on the road, see different training facilities, different equipment, and just to get to know the business. And I think one of the things about going on the road and meeting the coaches that I work with, is you re I really get a better understanding of what the business model is. And some of the work that we've been looking into is, you know, maximizing memberships in the facility, uh, maximizing uh, job roles, and also allowing you a bit more time. And something that we discussed, which I think is great for us to start on, it is over the last six months, you've delegated yeah. a lot of the day-to-day. -day. And I know when I first started, and somebody asked me the other day, what's one of the biggest things that you've learned over the years? And I think you will agree with me that we can't do everything. Yeah, for sure. So that was definitely one of the keys over the last six or seven months, learning to take a step back and look inside the business rather than just be involved in everything that happens day to day. Yeah. You have to understand that you're not the best suited for everything. Um, so it was really hard to take that step back originally and you know, because you do every part of the business, you think no one's as good as you at doing yeah, this, yeah, no one's as good as you no, at doing that. But, but then you realize actually, this person is far better at me or far better than me at doing this. Like, like you said, marketing, like, I, I thought marketing was putting up an Instagram post. Yeah. You know, I, I thought because I've got the best facility in the area, people are going to come anyway. Yeah. Where in reality, that's not the case. So it was taking that step back and saying, right, yep, yeah, we do have the best facility in the area, but how are people finding out about us? Yeah. We do have the best trainers in the area, but how are people finding out about us? Like, how are we displaying that message? It's really interesting point that you make there is that I did the same thing. When I opened up M10, I was a very busy, busy personal trainer. I opened up my first facility before we moved to Nottingham. And I genuinely believe that as soon as we moved into Nottingham, Nottingham will just know who I am. And I got to a certain point, then I was like, no, they don't know who I am. And I've got to do more marketing mm. and look into more uh, diverse ways of, of being able to reach different people. And what are some of the things that you have done to be able to raise awareness to LRF in Ashford? So the, the initial marketing campaign actually was when you joined LRF, you got a free t-shirt or jumper or something like that. And to me, that was marketing because people were walking around in LRF branded clothing, which was great because then everyone would say, what's LRF? Like, and then people would talk and engage and stuff like that. And then we got to a certain level of clients where we, we were doing okay, the business was turning over, it was making a nice bit of money. Um, and then we were like, well, we've stayed here for ages. What, what do we do next? So it was then saying, right, we're looking at, do we, do we have a good Instagram page? No, we don't. Do we have a good Facebook page? No, we don't. Do we have a good website? No, we don't. Like, and how do we get how do we go above it yeah. well we need to make sure that we're perfecting our instagram posts we need to make sure that we're perfecting our facebook pages we need to make sure that when people click on a website if it's their first impression of the gym it's not a terrible website because yeah. then they have a terrible impression of the gym they'll never get to the point where they come into the gym and look at the gym and experience the gym and say well actually it is the best gym in the area if they've not seen a professional website yeah. they've looked at an amateur website which looks poor 
if your first impression of the gym is my website, my website needs to be professional and tell yeah. you and explain that this is the best gym in the area. And then when you do turn up, you're like, oh great, this is the best gym in the area. But if you're just looking at an unprofessional Instagram post, an unprofessional Facebook post, an unprofessional website, you're, you're not gonna get to the stage where you come here in the gym. And you, won't, you won't make it to the gym. No, you won't, no, no. You won't, and, and I think it's all going well moving into an area like I did in Nottingham, like you did here, and said, right, well, I'm a bodybuilder, people know me, hmm. people know my physique, people know the results I achieve with people, they'll come. And then, and I think this is, this is the case for so many of you who eventually want to open up your own facility, whether it's a studio, whether it's a gym, whatever it may be, is that you need to move into your business with a marketing strategy. And I think something that you and I touched on before the video, we moved into our facilities and we said, well, I'm a bodybuilder, I'm gonna open up a gym. And I think this is a big mistake that a yeah. lot of fitness professionals make. We'll touch on marketing a little bit more as we move into this, but it's such important to, to flow into this is the fact that when you and I were chatting, you opened your gym up because you wanted a gym. Yeah. I opened up mine because I wanted a gym. Mm. I didn't open it to run a business. No. Would you say that that mindset shift into opening, opening and running a business would be one of the things you would change if you went back? Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. It, because I, I was like, well, I like this piece of equipment, so I'm gonna buy it. Yep. I, I like this treadmill, so I'm gonna buy it. We don't need that much cardio because I don't really like doing cardio. Me, I just, me too. I, yeah, I, you know, so, so, so I, I don't want to, I don't really want to buy treadmills or waste money on treadmills, yeah. you know, when in reality, most people will do cardio. Most people who will come to the gym will do some form of cardio, where I was like, I don't, I don't like doing cardio. And when I competed, I never had to do a lot of cardio. So I just want to get the best weights, the best dumbbells, the best this, the best that, rather than actually think in a business manner, well, do people really want that? Or yeah. do they want a bit more cardio? Do they want a little bit more variety? Are they interested in the best hammer strength ISO pull down? Or would they say, that's a really nice treadmill? Yeah. And they'd, they'd probably say, that's a really nice treadmill. Yeah. So yeah, so I didn't really have any sort of I had rough numbers in place, but they were literally just off the cuff. Like My dad says, they're like on a fag packet. Yeah, you just absolutely. Jot down, yeah, yeah, yeah. what's the rent? Yeah. How many trainers we're going to need? Yeah. How many members? Yeah, absolutely. Right, yeah. we're in. Yeah, yeah. And that's <laughs> it. And, 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 and I didn't count for things like, like just silly things like toilet roll. You know, like the gym has over 600 members who are all going to take a piss and shit in the gym. And, and I'm not thinking, <laughs> and I'm not thinking about that, you know? I'm but, not thinking. But on that, overheads. Exactly, yeah. yeah. It, it, it wasn't budgeted for. like. The fact that um, I, I didn't budget for someone to take away my waste, which is 130 pound a month. Yeah. But to have my recycling and my waste taken away is 130 pound, 130 pound a month, which is 1500 pound a year. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. know, I, I thought I'm going to work from six in the morning till 10 at night, and I'm going to do that seven days a week. You, you soon realize that's not achievable. Yeah. So I now need to get another member of staff. And what happens when that other member of staff sick and I'm on holiday? So I'm going to need another member of staff. So and you, surely you can't keep up with the PT exactly, if you're going to yeah. try and get this to 400, 500, 600 members. Absolutely, yeah. So w where I was going into a gym and saying, well, I've got a good reputation. I'm, I'm a good PT. I'm quite good with people. But if I'm PTing and somebody comes into the gym, I need somebody there who's going to introduce themselves and, and say, hi, I'm Mark. I, I work at LRF. Can I show you around? Yeah, yeah, so I yeah. then need to teach them about how to meet customers and greet customers because not everybody's born with the ability of customer service, you know, so whoever works for me then needs to go through a training process, which I didn't budget for, not in terms of financially, but in terms but the of time, time away as well. From being at the exactly, gym. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. training someone, this is how you walk people around, this is how you need to talk to people, this is how you greet them at the door. I never thought of any of that. I just thought people will come in because I'm a bodybuilder, the equip equipment's great, and I've got a good reputation, we'll be fine. And did you expect, just because you're a bodybuilder and just because you're a reputation, people would want to work for you and people would love working for you. Yeah, sure, absolutely. Again, because you think, because you're a bodybuilder and you have your own mindset, you think, oh, if Mr. Olympia asked for me to work for him, I'd go there straight away. Yeah. But other people don't have that mindset. I'm going to put an application out for jobs and people will come. Yeah, absolutely. And, and that wasn't the case, you know. Because of marketing, we're in a better position. We're sort of like, well, if, when we do advertise, people know who we are now. They don't just know me, they know LRF. Yeah. They know that gym's been around for a while. They know the fact that when I go there, I'm guaranteed to be looked after. I'm guaranteed to be taught a few new things. Whereas before it'd be like, LRF gym, apply. And then you'd get one or two applicants. Now it's sort of in the 20s, so. And, and less people know you. Yes, exactly, yeah. Right? Unless yeah. people know me, they know more the brand, they know LRF. Right, and yeah. it's exactly the same with M10. People come to M10 and I can go there on a Tuesday and say, and somebody will say to me, you know, who's that? 
yeah. to me. Yeah. And I'm like, you know, there's a picture of me there, but at the same yeah. time, they don't really connect the dots no, no, no. because they know the trainers, they know the yeah. brand, they know the the, 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 the culture within the facility. And sure. I think that's very important that that culture's created. You've clearly done that here. Yeah, yeah, sure, yeah. New members will, I, I only work on a Monday and a Thursday and I only do PT on a Monday and a Thursday. Yeah. So I don't actually work behind the desk. So new members will see me and they'll say, who's that personal trainer? Yeah, yeah. Not, is that the guy that owns the gym? They'll say, who's that personal trainer? But you've delegated, and this is the, the point that we will we'll, we'll touch on and leave on is, the delegation to managing the gym has been done now to somebody that's better than you. Absolutely, yeah. And I will tell you now that the person managing my gym is better at managing it than me. Mm. And I value her, and I value the team that manage and do everything for me, but that allows you to be able to look at the bigger picture and look at, Absolutely. ultimately, you've got overheads, you've got you've got a lot of bills to pay, and it's not gonna be your primary income stream because there's other stuff that's coming in. So, in kind of wrapping this up, for a fitness professional that's looking mm. to open up their own facility, what would be your number one piece of advice? They don't own one, yeah. they're in the industry, potentially don't necessarily have a very good reputation yet, what would you be a big piece of advice? I think my piece of advice for you would be to understand everything that goes into running a business because Brilliant. people don't understand the absolute, all of it. They don't understand all of it. They just think, this is me, this is my facility, it looks good, it's got good equipment. I've got great abs. Yeah, I've got, I've got good abs, I've got, I've got, I've got a good set I've of arms. I've got a good set of arms. Yeah, people will come, but you need to understand the absolute ins and outs of it. And I think what I would do is I would go to somebody who owns a gym and say to them, what didn't you know? Yeah. What didn't you know when you opened your gym? Tell me what you didn't know. Yeah. Because that's probably what you don't know when you're thinking about opening your facility. And then they'll give you a list as long as your arm, and you'll be like, oh shit, there's a lot more to it than what I think. And on that, if I may add, when you find out the things that you don't know, spend six months before you open a gym yeah. learning them. Yeah. Now there's some key areas, marketing, digital marketing, finance, looking at accounts and looking at tax implications because yeah. you might be under the back threshold to start with yeah. and then you get snapped up with 20% yeah. and you're screwed and then you've not accounted for it. Become more diligent with figures, become more diligent with marketing and go and see these individual pieces, people and learn the individual aspects. And once you've learned these individual aspects, then potentially start looking at facilities, mm. then put them into a business plan and sit down with something that's gonna help you develop a business plan. And then once you've got that all there, then say, is this right or is it wrong? Mm. Because the, one of the biggest things I learned from my dad was, you've got to look at worst case scenario. It's not, the gym's always gonna look nice. Whatever you see, you're gonna love it. I'm sure you did. You yeah. love this, I love them 10. My dad was like, worst case scenario. And I went, oh, no, 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 it's fine. But I think you've got to look at your figures, look at your, look at your business plan, and then be honest with yourself and say, can I make this work? Yeah. And if I don't know enough yet to make this work, I've got to go and study how to make it work before I try and learn too much off the cuff. Today's been fantastic, and you can probably, you, know, you might see the corner of the whiteboard, but we've had a, a good three hours of really going through the business, looking at different aspects. And I'll just touch on this. You know, Rob, how long have you been in the industry? Uh, 11 years now. Rob's been in the industry 11 years, and uh, I use the word vulnerability a lot, uh, where every business should allow themselves to be vulnerable, mm. to put your cards on the table and say, I wanna grow, and I wanna either learn from somebody or have your opinion based on where I'm at and what I could do differently. We've done that today. There's nothing wrong with allowing yourself to be vulnerable because you'll always learn, mm. and we always need to be challenged to go outside of our comfort zones, because outside of challenges always change. Um, so today's been awesome. I've loved training here. Thank you okay. for having me. My pleasure. Absolutely loved it. And uh, we'll surely see plenty more. Yeah. Um, but for now, guys, um, thank you very much for listening to the video. Um, again, we're on the road again. There's going to be plenty more of these. You've had an insight into the gym. You've seen a bit of training. And I hope you talked plenty from uh, what we discussed. So thanks, bud. Thanks ever so much.